Okay, what we have here is we have one version, particular version of the flowchart that you may use for your internal for investigating ions. Um, what's really cool about this, and I'll put it on Facebook um, after I'm done with this little video, um, is that this version has all the key um, and net ionic equations that you would have to write for any precipitates that form or for any uh, precipitates that disappear which is evidence for the formation of a complex ion. So um, all of the uh, precipitation equations um, are written here, as I say. So you can see them there. So if you add, um, if you have a silver um, cation from the silver nitrate solution and your anion present is iodide, then you'll form silver iodide, which is a solid, um, which is a precipitate. Now I'll just see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see that. There you go. So you can see that a bit closer now. Um, so Ag plus plus I, I negative. Um, state symbols are all mentioned, Aq for aqueous, and then S for solid precipitate. Up here, we have yellow color or yellow, yellow highlighter for precipitates formed, and then green for a complex ion formed. Now, if you notice, um, when you look at this flow chart, there's only one particular uh, green uh, color on the anions flow chart, which means there's only one complex ion that you need to be aware of when you're testing for your anions, and that complex ion is the silver and ammonia complex. And it's just you need to learn off the seven complex ions. Um, the combination of silver and ammonia, two ammonias will complex with one silver cation, and because ammonia is neutral, the overall charge in that complex ion is attributed to the silver ion alone, which is plus one. Um, going back to the top, I'll briefly uh, run through each one of these additions. Um, keep the current, don't show this message again. Okay, so if we run through each of these additions just to explain the origin of the equations. Um, so I did the first one. So a pale yellow precipitate is evidence of silver iodide. So you have silver ions from the silver nitrate solution and iodide would have been the, the unknown. And then that forms precipitate, which is pale yellow and that is silver iodide. Um, state symbols are used, aqueous for everything which is um, in solution, and then precipitate is, is S for solid. Next precipitate you may find is a mud brine precipitate, which is evidence of the hydroxide anion. And in this case, you have silver plus hydroxide forming silver hydroxide, which again, S for precipitate. Um, the next possibility is that you can have a white precipitate, which could be due to the presence of chloride or it could be due to the presence of carbonate. Um, two separate equations to write. Remember, you have to write an, a net ionic equation every time you have evidence of a precipitate. Um, so in this case, you have silver plus chloride forming silver chloride, which would be a solid. That's one possibility. Or you could have silver plus carbonate forming um, silver carbonate. Uh, there's one further step you therefore have to perform to distinguish between these two possibilities, and that's to add some dilute nitric acid some schools use nitric acid, other schools use um, hydrochloric acid. The main thing is that you have some source of, of H plus protons, and the protons will react with the carbonate to form a, a gas, and that gas there is carbon dioxide gas, CO2. Okay, and when that gas forms, you also get the um, formation of a salt. So if you remember from level one science, um, a methyl carbonate plus an acid gives you carbon dioxide salt and water. So in this case the salt would um, include the anion carbonate and that is how you identify the carbonate. Um, the chloride on the other hand, um, if you add acid um, nothing will happen and the, therefore to confirm the chloride on this particular flow chart there's a, a further step. It's not on all the flow charts but you can take it a step further and you take that chloride and you get a brand new sample and when you're told to get a new sample that means you empty your test tube bed with whatever was in it, wash it well and then get a new sample of the unknown. Hopefully in this case we're trying to identify chloride. So you get your new sample, add silver nitrate solution and initially you'll get a white precipitate just as before. So you must re write an equation for every, to explain every observation that you get. So if you take a new sample and you add um, silver nitrate and you get a uh, white precipitate, you must write the precipitation equation for that. Second thing you do is you add ammonia 
and the precipitate disappears. So if the precipitate disappears, that's evidence of a complex ion forming. Um, and that is the equation for that there. So you have your silver chloride um, white precipitate plus ammonia, which is aqueous solution, and you get two ammonias joined onto the silver. And as we mentioned earlier, this is the only complex ion that you're going to come across with your anion identification. So going back over here, um, if we come back to my pen here and we're continuing with um, the other possibilities, so if you have sulfate or nitrate, you get no precipitate with hydroxide ions. So you have to go um, a step further and take a new sample. So get a new sample and add some barium chloride. Barium chloride, um, uh, some schools use, you can use any source of, of barium as long as it's not sulfate because obviously you're trying to distinguish between the sulfate and the nitrate there. Um, with barium chloride, barium plus sulfate will give you barium sulfate, which is a precipitate, white in color, and that um, helps you identify the sulfate. Anion, if you get no precipitate, you get that means you must be dealing with the nitrate anion. And no precipitate means there's no equation. You don't write an equation anytime you have no precipitate. Um, so that's actually a brief overview of the anions flowchart. Um, now I'm going to just continue on down to the cations flowchart. So I'll stop this recording and render the first video and then do one for the cations.